Hi guys, welcome back to College Made Easy. I'm here today with Scott and Ben. We're missing Tim, but we're ready to talk about how to maximize your education in college. Scott, take us on with the question of the day. Okay, I want to go back to the days of like fun question of the days and like not so serious. So this is going to be, do you prefer Oreos or Chips Ahoy? Chips Ahoy. Oreos, ew. Oreos just are so fake to me. At least I can convince myself that I'm eating a homemade chocolate chip if it's a chip boy. I haven't had either in a long time, but it's I gotta think eat I've, a French fry. I I don't eat French fries either, but like. <laughs> I think I think I like Chips Ahoy slightly. No, I used to like Oreos, but then I think they changed the recipe and they tasted more artificial. Thank you. And so I think I like Chips Ahoy because they taste more like actual chocolate chip cookies. Only the OGs know what it used to taste like. That was when it was good. It kind of like like Oreos went from like a like nice like rich chocolatey taste for like the cookie part and the and the frosting was really good and now it just tastes like cardboard. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you guys this: Do you prefer the mini Oreos over the regular Oreos? There's mini Oreos. Yeah, like the really tiny ones. Oh, you mean the things that come in like the bag? Yeah. Yeah, or like they have the little cups. I think the mini ones still taste. M- more like it they used to taste so yeah i guess the mini ones yeah i agree i think the mini ones i don't know they taste better to me even though it's just a smaller version okay, how about by you guys yeah okay. is it snowing by you i have snow but it's not snowing oh. um now here's a hard question mini oreos or mini chips ahoy mini chips ahoy can I justify my answer? Oh. Answer? So yeah. like if I wanted a chocolate chip cookie, I would just have a chocolate chip cookie. I wouldn't have Chips Ahoy to make up for the lack of chocolate chip cookies. No, but Oreos are just so like totally different on the other side of the spectrum. So it's not like I'm craving chocolate chip cookies and then have Chips Ahoy. Oreos are like a totally separate craving. Yeah. You know? I understand your point. However, I do not crave Oreos at any point in time. I mean, I agree with the taste process. If that's how you view food, like, it's not something you pull out of the oven and is warm and delicious, but neither are chips right. away. Well, I think, I think you can settle the argument right here is which one relies so much on milk or it's too dependent on milk? I'd say 100% Oreos. You know what? I think they changed the recipe so that when you so you, you have to dip in the milk in order for it to taste good. Possibly. I'm totally making this up. Disclaimer: We have no idea if they changed the <laughs> recipe. <laughs> Disclaimer. Let's put that at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Right. Um. So yeah. yeah, let's get into the topic of today's episode. This one is all about learning and love of knowledge which we've all had right yes everlasting <laughs> love of knowledge when you're just when you're just in your uh your college dorm room studying for your exams you're like you know what i want to put down the material in my classes and i want to go learn other information it can or cannot be related but you're going to do it just because you want to be a smarter person in the future that's all just this episode um so i guess the first thing I don't know. We this could go a variety of different ways. Maybe I could just start off asking you guys what you what resources you like to utilize when you're not studying for exams and not studying class material. YouTube is the go-to. I watch uh, a lot of math and science channels. I love watching videos about strange science things that like you just don't think of. Like I watched a like Veritasium, great YouTube channel. Love that guy. Um, smarter every day. Just random physics things that are just so cool. What about you, Emily? I think for me, it's totally different. Um, I like learning when I know there's not a grade attached to it. So like, I go to Harvard EDX and like I'll take courses for fun on there. That's like not graded, no assignments, but like you just get 
all these articles and stories. Um, I like reading like the Bloomberg, New York Times, kind of just like going through daily updates on those platforms. But I'm not a big YouTube girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um no. <laughs> ben, ben got that. um <laughs> no but i want to you said something specifically in that statement that you said it's ungraded have you ever heard of the super mario effect that when yes that i watched that ted talk you saw it that was so good <laughs> <laughs> that when there's like no fear of failure or like no punishment like you end up doing scoring higher on whatever thing you're tasked to do Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's a hundred percent true. I actually haven't heard of that before. I mean, I've heard of the theory, but the Super Mario effect. Yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll put a link like right here <laughs> to uh, the TED Talk video that Scott and I are thinking of. It's it's called the Super Mario effect, I think, by uh, Mark Rober. I forget. I think I think Mark Rober. He also has a physics channel. He's fun to watch too. <laughs> But I think at the end of the day, it's just about like your passions, right? Like I've been super engaged in classes that I've taken that I know are going to be like not only beneficial for my future, but also that I'm interested in even outside of the classroom. And those are like the topics that I end up researching further, right? But then there's classes that aren't graded. Like I took a voice and movement class last semester. It was like yoga and stretches. And yeah, it wasn't graded, but I still didn't do anything. Because I just wasn't into it at that time, you know? So you only like learning information that relates to your passions. Or not passions, just like your schoolwork? I No, I think it would be my passions. It could so be a good or bad thing, but like... It's useful knowledge that you would find useful when applied to what you are passionate about. Yeah, like anything that I could link the pieces together with. Like knowledge, like knowing exactly how far the Earth and the Moon are from each other, it's not useful. We are never going to remember that. <laughs> I know. Unless we work at NASA and we're sending a rover to the Moon, then you probably should know. But like, for Emily, it's something else. Not the distance to the Moon. Like I don't know. Yeah, but then again, I get like every student should have this like diverse background and know a little bit. You know what I mean? Like we want that rounded education. Hmm. But. In terms of what I like doing in my free time, I try to link it to stuff I'm already interested in, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. What about you, Scott? I'm, I'm a big YouTube person, honestly. And then um, when oh. I'm not on... But that's the thing. That's, it's a double-edged sword with YouTube because the algorithm is so good that if you're watching something dumb or just like entertaining... Like 4K? The algorith- <laughs> What'd you say? Like 4K? <laughs> 4K, Yeah it's going to keep recommending you more content. However, if you're, if you're watching educational stuff, it's going to keep recommending that. Um, so it depends on what you're watching. You can like get into this like feedback loop of just like constantly watching. So I'd, I'd call it like almost like TikTok content where it's just like you, you, you're just addicted to it. <laughs> um, but I feel like in order to avoid that, I kind of like listen to podcasts um, for like longer form stuff and, I don't know. You don't get distracted while listening to a podcast. I get distracted when listening to anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what time of the day do you listen to podcasts? Because that's for me is like a morning activity. Yeah. Any other time of the day, it doesn't even come to mind. How weird. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I agree. But for me, instead of podcasts, it's audiobooks. Like when I go to the gym, I listen to music, but at the end of every gym session, I run on the treadmill and I switch from Spotify to Audible so fast. Mm-hmm. So can and you then, listen to the books while you're running on the treadmill? Because that's interesting to me. Yeah. You can never do that. I'm running on a treadmill. I'm not. I turn the T. I, I go to Planet Fitness. I turn the TV off and just run. <laughs> listen to Sherlock Holmes. You're so could, weird. Is that just on the treadmill or could you go running outside and listen to an audiobook too? I can't do that. I think it's only on the treadmill. If I'm outside, I'm listening to music. I let my wind I let my wind wander. I let my mind wander when I'm outside. That's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, pro tip, one of the most relaxing things and I discovered it this semester 
if you just like want to like escape everything and not focus on anything and also want to learn at the same time get some like earbuds bring your phone get up early in the morning and just walk around yeah. like outside and listen to audiobook or podcast or something that's informative um it's like very relaxing honestly I think it's relaxing as long as it's not freezing outside it, yeah <laughs> no honestly because uh by the, towards the end of the semester it was getting pretty cold out like when i walked to the gym at like 6 30 7 30 in the morning it was like 38 degrees and i was like oh 38 degrees but like in the fall as it's getting colder 38 feels pretty cold but uh like just walking to the gym every day well before i started going to the gym in the mornings i would like wake up like mildly frantic like i gotta start the day i gotta like do some work i have so much to do like when i woke up early and like walked to the gym it was just so relaxing to start off the day like that and then going to the gym or whatever would make me it makes me more productive so but now I'm driving to the gym. It's a little less relaxing, but it's still nice. I think at school when you do the walk, it's like the world's quiet, right? Like everyone's still sleeping, like the quad's empty. You kind of like beat everyone to it. So it's like that peace and quiet. Like it's cliche, but like the birds are out, the squirrels are running around. Mm -hmm. So I get Sun's what you mean. rising. Yeah. A squirrel hit me with a nut once on the way to the gym. <laughs> Tim just texted me. Ooh. Yeah, I just got a text too. <laughs> I didn't. What the heck? <laughs> Tim, if you're watching this, we now know Ben is your least favorite. <laughs> well, like, did you both text him to see where yes. he was? We were talking earlier. Well, I asked him where he was for the podcast. He's not here. <laughs> yeah, so Scott texted him where he was. And you were talking to him earlier. I haven't talked to Tim all day. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> um. But, like, would you guys agree? I mean, I don't know if you've done this, but if it's relevant to your to the courses you're taking, if you go, like, learn all this outside information and stuff, and then in class, does it make it more enjoyable experience? Because when a teacher references something, something new, and you already know what it is, you feel like you're amazing. Or, or if you're having, like, a class debate, and you have, like, all this other knowledge, like, in the back of your mind, and you can just, like, reference it and, like, own people in in class discussions <laughs> roasted um i think more the second thing that you described like debating in class or like having discussions it's more useful then but like going to um mathematical statistics i don't think in my wildest dreams i would just like be watching youtube videos and like one comes up about uh a chi-square distribution and then the next day we learn that in class like it's, it depends on the class, yes. I don't think I'll ever just happen to watch a math video and then I learn that in class the next day. Mm -hmm. For me, I think it's, like, powerful to be informed. Maybe that's just my major, but, like, for you guys, it could be different. But, like, we always have to be up to date with current events and what's going on in the market and turnover stuff with different companies, CEOs. Like, it's more – stuff's changing way more rapidly than maybe in, like – a science field you know where everything is still changing in companies don't get me wrong but i think for business it comes up in class discussions like easy every day yeah a lot of my classes started the classes with so what's going on in current events you know what companies are becoming publicly traded this year different conversations that if you didn't know what was going on you were behind just for that alone and that's not just participation points it's like as an individual in this society it is beneficial to know these things you know i i just thought about something you can get a better relationship with your teacher if you have more knowledge than everyone else like coming into the class especially mm -hmm. like without learning anything and you already have like this baseline knowledge about the subject um teacher will probably like respect you right off the bat i think that could be a difference between a b and an a honestly yeah and it's kind of awful but i think that I don't want to say it's an advantage, but like, I think that it makes you appear smarter than you may be. Oh, Tim would have been great on this episode because I know he does this all the time. Like I'll be in like an e like for our most recent econ class. He's coming in like the first topic we were uh, in the class was like economic effects of COVID-19. Right. This kid has been researching that for literally months on end. 
And yeah. so he comes into the class. He already knows everything. He, he knows everything about the CARES Act. And he knows like the exact amount of the, um, uh, uh, the stimulus checks that they sent to everyone. He knows like the guidelines of it. Um, he knew like the number of unemployment claims is like, he just knew like everything. And like, he just made everyone look so dumb in the class. <laughs> but it goes back to your passions, you know, like, this is what I mean of like the outside research and learning that you do and connecting it to what you're doing in school. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Tim loves economics. We know that. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like if it's, if there's no downsides to it, then why don't more people do it? I'm tempted to say it's something along the lines of burnout. Not like, not like semester long burnout. Like we were very burnt out at the end of the semester, but like kind of like daily burnout where like, you went to class, you did a bunch of homework, it's time to relax. I don't want to learn something new anymore, you know? I agree. Like a long day of studying and then playing Xbox with the boys at the end. Maybe even just time management. Like, that time that you can be spending online or, like, you guys watch YouTube, that could be time that you're getting ahead for the next day, reading tomorrow's chapter, like, doing the assignment that's due next Tuesday. Like, I think that when I was in school, like last semester was always, I should be doing more, especially now, like more classes were online. I was like, okay, now I should, what's the next assignment I can do? What's the next reading I should do? What's due next week? Like you always want to use your time the most effectively and your brain just automatically thinks of like due dates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, like, I really want to, um, I mean, this goes along with this uh, episode about reading books and stuff. But like, I want to read more books and I have been, but reading is never at the top of my priority list. And it's not like the most, you have to like really get into reading. Like you have to like read consistently every single day. And like, if you skip days then you're going to lose motivation to it. It's um, literally like working out. Yeah, basically. So for me, I was like, I find myself pushing off reading so much like throughout the day. Because I have other more, not more important, but like more urgent, more urgent and more enjoyable things like that bring me more like instant satisfaction. So what I've been doing now is like I've allotted some like time right before I go to bed when I know I'm literally going to be doing nothing is just like read a chapter of a, of a book like right before I go to bed. And I can't really make an excuse because like what else would I be doing in that time? You can watch think Netflix. The power of doing a little bit every day instead of putting the pressure, like read a whole chapter every day. Like even if you do 10 to 15 pages a night or like open up your laptop and watch one 10 minute video, it's still more than you knew before. Right. Mm. I think our personal expectations are also higher, you know? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm taking a history class right now over the winter break. Uh, it's a U.S. history class since the end of World War II. And I'm actually reading the textbook like assigned. I'm actually doing it. And it history is so textbook? Interesting. What? A his re history textbooks are the hardest ones to read, other than no, like, maybe like, like science this, majors. This isn't like a textbook textbook. Like this is a very interesting book that she assigned as the textbook. Okay. It's oh, it's right here, actually. It's called The United States Since 1945, American Dreams. Maybe it's the other way around. American Dreams, The United States Since 1945 by uh hw brands it's is so it a book or a textbook it's a book that sh the professor assigned as a textbook it is so easy to read it's broken up into chapters and each chapter is broken up into parts it's and like there's dates for each chapter like it's chronological going through time it's find a good book guys <laughs> i'm actually enjoying reading it but do you think this could be because it's like winter term and you don't have the pressure of five, maybe six classes and you actually are dedicating the time to read it right now? Oh, absolutely. If I was taking this during the spring or fall, no this way. It's on the it. bottom of the list, right? Oh, absolutely. Spark note that. <laughs> yeah, like, do you guys bring books to school to read, like fun books to read, and then you find yourself never reading them? I start it. <laughs> so... Fun fact, I brought uh, The Great Gatsby to school uh, this past semester to read. And uh, then I 
I was at my desk and I was moving things around. I put my laptop on the left and I put my monitor on the right, but my monitor was like tilted down too far. So I was like, oh, I got to put something under it to tilt it up. So I put the Great Gatsby underneath and it is still there. <laughs> I have not read a page since like August. My bookmark is still in it too. That's awful. And I love the Great Gatsby. So yeah, sorry. But it's not your type of book. Like I was shocked that you were even reading that. I, it's a conversation for another episode. <laughs> but it goes back to what you're interested in. Right. Oh, can you have the audacity to start reading a book and then just stop and give it up? Not like not because you get not because you get lazy, just because you don't like the book. Yes. For me, Although like I, don't think I, I ever have. I don't think I've started reading a book and not liked it. Because <laughs> then you wouldn't start it. Yeah. Right. But then again, it's like, for me, like whenever I buy my books, and like I'm sure you guys feel this way too, but like that's your money, right? Like whether you're spending five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars you kind of think before you buy it, you know? If it's a book someone's giving you and they're like, oh, Scott, like you'd love this book and you just never read it because it was lent to you, but it's not really your style and you're just over it. Yep. That's totally different than like basically investing in a book, you know? Uh, that's acknowledging sunk costs in economics, which is irrational. <laughs> I don't see Never, mi never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's not here. <laughs> Scott was like, oh, this is perfect. We could have a conversation about econ. Yeah, it's the econ it's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, another thing here that I wrote was just using your outside knowledge on job interviews to, um, to show that you're actually interested in whatever subject you're learning and that you went the extra mile. Mm -hmm. Um to learn more because it shows you're interested um, compared to someone who just, I don't know, uh, just takes all their classes, gets decent enough grades and then goes on a job interview and they say, Hey, I, I think Tim said this too, where they, a common interview question is what's the last book you've read or something like that. Yeah. It's like, if you have a good answer and it's related to the job and, and to the subject, like that's like actually like pretty impressive. I'm literally laughing because I was talking to Scott the other day about this book that I'm currently reading. Huh. And, and he's your boss. <laughs> and I don't think that I can say that name on the podcast. Oh, how to. Uh... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, it's why. Oh, that book. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got you. But, like imagine I'm being interviewed and like. Someone about learning gonna... the art. What? Isn't the one that like learned the art of the subtle art of not? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was the one that I was reading at college and you were like, well, you are a Okay. <laughs> Fill in the blanks. No. Um, but they would think that you're reading like a Gary V or I don't know, like some motivational, inspirational book. But like I guess it's a time and place. Some people don't read. Some people go to interviews. They could have had like gone to a good school, a good GPA, maybe even an MBA program, not even MBA specifically, but higher education. And some people just don't really read people like some people aren't interested in reading books anymore. I mean, you don't have to be interested. I'd, I'd say there's a substitute for it. If you're not into reading, I, I'm perfectly I, I understand that Yeah, but you have to substitute it with something to show your interest whether that be YouTube. I mean, that's that's tough, though, on an interview if you're like, oh, I watch YouTube a lot. I think you'd have to really bamboozle your, like, people's skills there and yeah, maybe even you, go down the podcast route, like, oh, I listen to College Made Easy and they talk about this and... Yeah. But like, I, don't, I feel like that's not even a popular interview question anymore. Maybe I could be wrong. I Are think you? it is. Sorry, my phone was ringing. And I had to like wait for it to stop. <laughs> um, I'm fully prepared to walk into an interview right now and be like, yeah, the last book I read is a history book. Ask me about it, please. 
um, but like I'm a math and actuarial science major. Uh, I would honestly, because of my people skills, if somebody asked me what's the last book you read, I'd be like, are we including audiobooks? Because <laughs> I could rattle off some audiobooks. <laughs> Try hard. Imagine if <laughs> like audiobooks don't count. <laughs> <laughs> if, they were, if they said that, I'd be like, well, in that case, it was a history book. <laughs> Imagine if it was someone snooty and they were like, no, we asked what books you read, not the books you listened to. Oh, world star. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, I know exactly what, ha- what happened in the Cold War. Come at me, bro. <laughs> Yeah, but for I me, played like, I pl- reading and listening to books, it's the same thing. Like I would have just said, Yeah, I read that book. Right? You listened Say to that again? book. But if it was like in that context, I wouldn't have been like, oh, actually it was an audible book. I would have just a- said audio book. But like, you know what I mean? <laughs> There's a website called Audible. Like, it's not a website. An app that people listen to it. But like uh, you don't have to be so whatever. specific. Whatever. When it's Emily, I gotta rip into her a bit. You know, but you know what I was talking about. Yeah, I do know what you're talking about. Anyway, I think it was a rhetorical question. Anyway, yes, they're gonna count audiobooks. <laughs> but What's the biggest takeaway from this episode that that people interviewing you will ask you about reading books, and they will count audiobooks. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm. I, I understand why people don't, like, don't read books anymore. Like sitting down with a book and doing nothing except reading, it's hard to do. You have to have a good imagination and really get into the world that you're reading about to really enjoy it unless you are like forcing yourself to. And honestly, it's harder to like read a books every day than it is to go to the gym every day. Ben sounds like my like elementary school librarian right now. <laughs> <laughs> I find reading <My> calling. <laughs> reading promotes reading. It does. Someone quote me on that. Hundred percent, it does. Especially if you re- if the first thing you read is a motivational book, then you're motivated to read. I've never read a motivational book in my life. They're so good. It's good. It's interesting. <laughs> There's like a whole section in in bookstores. Like I went to a Tatnuck near me, and there's like a whole area that's like all self help. I think my favorite store to get lost in is Barnes and Noble. But when you go into that environment, it makes you want to read. Like then you see all these books and you're just like, how am I not reading 24 hours of the day? And then you get all those books and you go home and you're like, all right. (laughs) (laughs) It's almost like you're a kid at a candy shop. It's almost like you're purchasing a a movie and then you think, oh, the movie's going to play and I just have to watch it. I don't have to do anything. But it's like it's different for reading because you you have to actually Do actively something. engage in reading. I think the last time that I went to a Barnes and Noble, despite how much I love getting lost in there, the last time I went was with Tim two years ago. And instead of buying a book, I bought a puzzle. <laughs> 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 it was I think it was my birthday gift to Tim, and then we did it that night. <laughs> I, I was visiting school before I went here. There. We stayed up until four in the morning. Good times. Anyway. You know what I think books need is to be more interactive. Like, I think that a lot of people in our generation are liking the books where you can, like, like for example, the self-help books where you can comment and, like, write your goals or write your dreams or, like, mm-hmm. I know manifestation and all those things are big now. So, like, write what you want to see yourself do in the next month, three months, six months. Because then it's more than just, like, reading it and experiencing. You're, like, I don't know. Mm. Honestly, the reason that I started reading The Great Gatsby is because I wanted to actually, like, appreciate. Did I say that word right? Wow, it sounded weird. Appreciate literature more. Just, like, great literature, like The Great Gatsby. Um, Well, now I'm drawing a blank, so I got nothing. But, like. Isn't there? Isn't the Notebook an actual book? Like the, the movie, movie, The Notebook. The movie, The Notebook, wasn't yeah, probably is. Book? Yeah, and just like all of the movies that I've seen that are like based on books, like I would love to read the books. I guess Harry Potter is an example, but 
I'm not reading seven books in a row that are based on the same thing. Uh Uh-uh, not happening. No, I I get that. I wish I could appreciate literature when I was actually like in high school and middle school and they forced us to read that, but those aren't my type of books. So I, it's, I can't get into it. Honestly, I was never forced to read a book in high school. No, oh. I take it back. We were forced to read the Lord of the flies, but it wasn't exactly. even like, it wasn't even like you have a month. Like we're going to like the Lord of the flies is going to be a month. It was like, what a 16 chapter book. We spent the entire year reading the 16 chapter book i had to read that in two weeks which led to spark notes Mm -hmm. i would rather have done that instead i I hate the lord of the flies because my teachers i mean my teacher ripped into it just like a chapter every two weeks like read it then we're going to talk about it and then you have to like analyze it and then they watch the clip we didn't even watch the clip she didn't even show us the clip it was like Books are good. Some of them have analogy, analogies and symbolism. Don't look into it too much. <laughs> then that it just that the- book was all about symbolism, though, to be fair. Yeah, but to be fair, I did not need to focus on the symbolism for a year of my life. Wasn't uh, his name Piggy in that book? Piggy? Yeah, he's the uh, fat kid. Yeah. Yeah, was I? Th- I heard something that he was supposed to like represent Jesus. No, 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 not not Piggy. The other one, Simon. Simon, oh, Simon was Jesus. Jesus. Believe me, I know. <laughs> they go very in depth with that with that story. <laughs> he finds a pig's head on a spike. It was weird. Wait, <laughs> I have a question that's not related. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> we kind of went off. What do you guys there. feel about how college? Will they say like education as a whole doesn't teach you what you need to know for the real world? Do you guys think that's true? 100% yes. Kind of. <laughs> if I, I don't know still. If I didn't have parents or Google or... I don't know. That's all I got. So what I would you parents, want to learn that, that your education hasn't given you? If I didn't have parents or Google and I graduated high school and then somehow made it into college and graduated college... Um, I would graduate with my degree and I would not know how to buy a house. I would not know how to open a checking account. Nobody teaches you that in school. Nobody teaches you life in school. They teach you how to manipulate data or start a business. How do I buy a car? How do I change a tire? College teaches you how to learn. I think Honestly, it provides the capacity for like challenging situations. Sometimes I would say college teaches you how to not learn. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like we always talk about like ha- like college hacks and how to learn and how to be well-rounded and how to impress your teachers and outperform your classmates and get good grades. But like how how beneficial is the system, you know? The only benefit that I'm seeing myself getting from college is a great time with my friends and a company will hire me for my degree. Do you think all the hard work is for the degree? Yeah. I mean, with my specific degree, I can go into various things, but only because I have the degree. I couldn't do any of the jobs that I'm probably going to apply for if I didn't have the degree. Right. Wow. Even if you had all the skills. Yeah. Okay. Even if I had all the skills, yes. I get the, what you mean. The, your, um, your grades and your degree get you in the interview. However, your personality and who you are gets you the job. You know, Scott, that might have been last year when you were looking for internships. <laughs> Tell that to me, recording myself on my phone for these interviews. You oh, recorded? they're making you do that? Mm-hmm. Oh. Terrible. Terrible. That's awkward. Um, could be viewed as an advantage, Ben. Change your perspective. That's fair. On the on, on the bright side, I was wearing sweatpants and a button down. <laughs> right. And that's you don't the- get those pre-interview sweats bef- when you're on your way in the waiting room. And yeah, no, you still do. <laughs> really? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. But you can just spray some Febreze afterwards, so it's fine. <laughs> hey, bye. 
Um, okay, I mean, I think I think we should wrap up here. <laughs> um, oh, that actually, wonderful oh, note. Well, Emily intro, so she can outro, actually. Guys, they were they were doubting my ability to intro because I was missing an action for a little bit. But oh, 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 the fans know. Yeah, they know. Yeah. What did you guys say? <laughs> oh, every episode, almost every episode. It was like, where's Emily? Unless yeah. I was added in the comments. They didn't Were miss you? that much. Unless I was. Uh, I, I haven't checked I don't comments think she's lately. added in the comments. <laughs> They're fine. <laughs> Even when we had Lily on. I missed the Lily oh. one. And that one hurt. That's a good I one. Missed- that was that's such a good, a good episode. I really love Lily, so that one I wish I was there for, especially. Yeah. We gotta the- have a Lily John crossover. Event. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. What are we We're gonna make that happen? Just, there and just let them talk full time. That's what I want to know. It's what gonna be say? like a supernova. <laughs> no, Lily's really cool. Two black holes spinning around each other. Um. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to outro without getting roasted by Scott, Ben, and most likely Tim when he watches the episode. But Tim, we missed you today. Everyone else, keep following College Made Easy. Like and subscribe and leave any comments below of what you think, what books you like, don't like. And I feel like we ended up talking about books more than... We did. So that's (laughs) that's it. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.